Arsene Wenger has refused to clarify his future position at Arsenal. That's because he lost 3-0 at Selhurst Park and it's not the perfect time to announce that he's already signed a two-year contract. Theo Walcott was really upset at Arsenal's defeat and said it's not very Arsenal at all, although anyone watching Arsenal this season knows that it's completely Arsenal. Jack Wilshere's opened up about the kind of music he was listening to when he was growing up. It's not super embarrassing or anything, so he was pretty open about it. He grew up listening to S Club 7 and Boyzone just like every other 13 year old girl. His PR team actually tried to deflect the news by getting John Terry to send him a signed shirt. It didn't work. I still can't stop picturing him dancing to Bournemouth. I mean, tragedy. Romelu Lukaku and Paul Pogba have been hanging out. Naturally, Man United fans everywhere are getting overexcited and convinced themselves that Pogba's convincing him to join United. But they were just hanging out, watching football and listening to music. Well, Lukaku was watching football. Pogba was listening to music. Pogba literally had his headphones in all night. He must be wonderful company. This is clearly the work of wonder agent Mino Raiola, who represents both players. Lukaku probably just wanted more Instagram followers and of course another mention on my EPL. You win, Raiola. You win. I told you Marouane Fellaini was the most popular man in Manchester. Now his popularity has peaked as he captained his team to a win against Sunderland. Having Marouane Fellaini as captain of your team is probably the most brutal taste of reality for Man United fans. They're used to their list of captains being people like Giggs, Keane, Gary Neville and Cantona. Now they can add Fellaini to that incredible list of leaders. And it gets worse. I mean, he was only captain because Chris Smalling wasn't available. What does Mourinho see in him? Everton versus Leicester may have finished 4-2 and been one of the most exciting games of the season, but there's one thing in that game that really stood out for me. It was the hottest day of the season and Islam Slimani wore woolly gloves. Woolly gloves. Naturally, Twitter went berserk. I'm kind of embarrassed how no one in the UK knows what the temperature is though. Ever since Balotelli left the Premier League, there's been a gaping hole in our hearts. Nothing to do with the football, he was piss poor on the pitch, but the stories that surround the beautiful game. You know the ones, the romantic ones, like when he took his brother to a women's prison to find a wife, and the action ones, like when he set fire to his own bathroom using fireworks. We miss those stories, and there's still a hole yet to be filled. But Diego Costa's trying damn hard to fill it. Costa was filmed stealing a groundsman's cart and driving the full 50 feet to the training pitch. He then dismantled and smashed up a hurdle on the ground. He's trying, but he's no Balotelli, is he? Struggling with a bib is where their similarities end. Smashing up a hurdle is hardly rock and roll. If Costa wants to be a hard man, he's gonna have to do something newsworthy, like vandalizing a teammate's car or flooding Cobham. Then he'd be on my Balotelli scale. Lucas Perez and David Ospina are in trouble. <laughs> they weren't named on the team in the last game, so they were at home, and their actions, I think, perfectly illustrate the desperate times at Arsenal. They weren't even watching. They weren't watching the game. They were playing PlayStation instead. How do we know this? They actually Instagrammed their gameplay during the actual game. Now what does that say about the team? Eh? I don't often talk about Crystal Palace. That's because they're managed by Sam Allardyce and I'm still protesting. I'm done.